Welcome to Bigger Than the Game with Darren and Jose. I'm Darren Dove, and I'm joined by my tag team partner, the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Jose Ruiz. What's going on, man? Darren Dove, what's going on, my brother? How you doing, man? I'm doing great. I'm doing great. And for those, yeah, we're a sports history show, and how you talk about something present is like, no, nah, we got skills. We can do all those things. And when you see, and, you know, Jose has the hat on, I got the hat behind me. But is there like homerism with this? Absolutely. I'm not gonna say there's not. Of course. But it, yeah. it's it's beyond that. Cause we're not just like a local show. We're a national show. We talk about everything. But this is special. And this yeah. 2022 Phillies playoff run, I think is special. And it's not you don't just have to be a Phillies fan, a local person to ride the wave and see how special this is. I think all baseball fans, all sports fans should be glued in and should be talking about and remembering this run, Jose. I agree. I agree 100%. And you reached out to me about doing this, you know, for YouTube. And I was like, absolutely, you know, because there have been some moments in this run, but definitely this last series that, you know, we always talk about it on the show, Dare Me. It's like, oh, do you remember when you were watching this and where were you at? And it's like some – very vivid memories of like sports events in the past for us. And, you know, what happened, what happened on Sunday, you know, it was October 23rd, you know, yeah, my, my mom's birthday. There you go. Mama Dove, happy birthday, man. And, yeah. um, you know, what happened Sunday in game five, like I'm, I'm never going to forget that. You know what I'm saying? Like that's a moment where I know who I was with. I know where I was at what I was watching, like, you know what I mean? Like, it, it was one of those moments that literally I was speechless, blew my mind. Like, I, I was going, like, crazy. And I'm not the big, like, screaming fan, like, jumping. I might jump up down, but I'm not, like, the big screamer or things like that. But I, I was sitting there, like, what I'm watching right now is absolute greatness. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and some unbelievable stuff. And I, I'm never going to forget this. And, and I think that's a great place. And I agree with you, but I think it's because there's a lot of things we can do. Uh, I've, I know you want to say, and I want to say that connects this on a bigger scale, past right. to the present, or present to the past. However, you want to flip it this time yeah. around. But let's start with the player, Bryce Harper. And I, you know, I, I, I was thinking. I remember, you know, in with '76, Chris Chambliss with the Yankees hitting that home run to win the pennant. And I know, like, the game was – it didn't end the game completely. It was in, you know, the eighth. The Padres still could have came back. But this was a pennant-clinching home run. Yeah. And there's something – I and I thought about past shows we've done where there's lists that you can have of – in any sport, this player is greater than that player. But sometimes the player who we agree isn't as great, culturally they touch on something – deeper than the guy who's better than them. And I when Harper hit that home run and that night afterwards, I'm thinking about the debate that we people have been having, and it's kind of gone down as a debate, but, it, it, you know, this generation is Mike Trout, Bryce Harper. Right. And I agree with people. Mike Trout is ahead of Bryce Harper. But also there's something – Mike Trout's not doing that. Yeah. And Mike Trout's not saying, hey, hop on my back, and I want everyone looking at me – and I'm going to carry a team. I'm going to carry a city. I'm going to change the culture. And you know what? I put it, they gave me this big contract in a big market. And you know what? I want the spotlight. I want this. We, we've critiqued other athletes and other sports who don't want to go to the big market and take the pressure. And we're like, man, like, I hear you, but I wish you would do that because it would be so iconic if you did it. And right. Bryce Harper with that. This playoff run and that home run, he cemented a career, and he's not done yet. But if he doesn't, if he never plays, we know it's not true. Knock on wood. Another game for the Phillies after this year, he's worth that three hundred thirty million dollar right. contract. No, I agree. I agree hundred percent. And again, there's there's a lot of players with a ton of talent, right? Like right now, like you mentioned that that Trout Harper debate has kind of died down. Like you have Otani, like you have a lot of players now who are stepping into that conversation, um, which rightfully so, you know what I mean? Like rightfully so, but you know, we hear this player is not clutch. 
right? Like you hear that thrown around so, so much, right? In sports in general, baseball, right? Not so much, but in sports in general, right? And, you know, he's scared of the big, like the spotlight, right? You hear that all the time, like, you know, especially he's being compared to like LeBron James, like career wise, not like the greatness of LeBron, but like just, you know, like them coming in so young and being like phenoms at such a young age, you know, like Harper was on Sports Illustrated at 16 years old. Like I remember mm-hmm. hearing story, like reading stories on Harper hitting home runs and Coors Field, like in batting practice one time, like as a teenager, you know. Um, but for for a player not to shy away from the moment, and you tell you just talked about it a little bit there. I mean, like not to shy away from the moment, but want like want that pressure on them. You don't see that a lot. Like you do not see that a lot especially in like huge markets like Philadelphia, you know, like maybe New York, like players, places like that, like guys were rather shy away a little bit from that. And, and again, like, and, and we kill them as fans, right? Like for players to shy away from that and, and be afraid of the moment and stuff for an individual, not only that moment, but this whole playoff run, like, you know, and, and it's been talked about, and we'll talk about it a little bit on this episode is the Phillies were the last seed to get in the playoffs you know, they, you know, they, if it is, you know, with the new format, which we'll, we'll talk about too, like they barely squeaked in, you know, but they've won nine out of 11 playoff games. You know what I mean? Like they, they, they beat to me one of the best teams I thought was going to win it all were the Atlanta Braves, but the Cardinals were no scrubs either, you know, and nine out of 11, I mean, everybody's talking about Houston being undefeated and rightfully so. And we'll talk about Houston in a minute, but you know, nine out of 11 games, it's, it's a nice run as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, and for him to be the catalyst, the lead, whatever you want to call him, he's having an all-time amazing playoff run. If 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 the game would have – if he doesn't play another game, you know, this year, but he's got four more or maybe six, six seven more games. But the thing is, is also you're seeing what the impact of a superstar player – and that confidence carry over. There's no doubt the confidence that Bryce Harper won. Schwarber, Kyle Schwarber a little bit as number two. Reese Hoskins, who is a flaky hitter, let's be real. Super streaky. But the confidence that those two guys have going down to Reese Hoskins, even with JT, who's the best catcher in baseball, you're seeing him puff up a little bit more, in right. my opinion. Super quiet guy, yeah. Right, because of Bryce carrying that load. Bryce saying, hey, come on, guys, hop on my back. I'll take you there. And there's something to that, that that's a generational talent. And, hey, we people can go back in our YouTube uh, archive. Check and we the look archives. At the, check them. The captain. And we talk about A-Rod is better than Jeter, no doubt about it. Right. Whether you look at PEDs or not, whatever, he's a better player. But there was something to it. Who is more known? Who has those iconic clutch moments? It's Jeter, and he's forever in the fabric of fans where A-Rod's kind of pushed out. And I think that's what Harper did right here with what he did this playoff and what he did this past Sunday is this is a moment that will be talked about Mm -hmm. in Philadelphia, but in baseball. We'll remember 2022, that game-winning home run to win the pennant. Like, that's something, you know, outside, you know, Bill Mazeroski and Joe Carter, that's that the only way you can get bigger is doing it for the World Series. Right. So it's like to see what he did, it's unbelievable. And to me, and the journey's not done. We'll see what happens here. They have their toughest task definitely is this Astro team. Right. No doubt about it. But, you know, you mentioned, and I, I got to go with New York, like, examples. To me, it's Joe Namath, Super Bowl three. It's Mark Messier, 94, and what he did there. And there was other great players around them, but these were the guys who put themselves out there, who took on that limelight, and they're forever etched. Joe right. Namath, there, and he gets knocked. I think people are talking about it like he did have more than Super Bowl three, But let's be real. Super Bowl three is what got him in the Hall of Fame. It's why yep. he's still an icon now. Let's be real. Mark Messier had won five cups before he got to New York. But what do we all talk about? I don't go to the Oilers when I think of Messier. Yeah, he, I won, to, he won an MVP in, in Edmonton. You yeah. Know, like. I go to what he did in 94, which is he took a team and they played off of him. 
And there's other great players on those teams with these guys, but they rode the confidence of that superstar. And that's the power of having that guy. And I, I think like, man, I'm not going to lie. I knew they had to pay him, but when Harper got that contract, I'm like, he's not going to live up to this. Who can? And he proved me wrong. Right. Cause on the other team in that same series, you had Manny Machado who I wanted, right? Mm-hmm. I wanted Manny Machado over me too. Bryce Harper for one. I felt like Machado would last longer. Um, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I think he would, he's going to come close to playing throughout that contract. Plus, Selfishly, I wanted like a Hispanic superstar on the Phillies, which we never ever have. Um, maybe never will have. <laughs> but yeah, I don't the closest know. is what Bobby. I would say he wasn't a superstar, but he was close. He was getting there. Abreu, Abreu is yeah. like the closest we've had. Right, and um, you know, so that was obviously four four years ago, five years ago at this point. Um, but no, like he talked about like having a superstar like that. What that what that does also for these other guys takes a ton of pressure off of them. You know what I mean? So, excuse me, one thing you see is this team is playing super loose, right? Like, you know, they, granted, they haven't really, like, have to face adversity yet in the playoffs, but, man, like, you got guys like Reese Hoskins. <laughs> he might be the worst first baseman defensively I've ever seen. Like, you know what I mean? But, yeah. again, he's, he's, hitting, he's hitting bombs too. But, like, when you got a guy like Harper, like, doing what he's doing, it takes some of that shine of what Reese is not doing and putting it on him. And this is like, give me all the pressure. I take care of it. <clears throat> and um, we're going to be fine. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, and it, it allows now, Reese to come back and do bigger things. I, I'll say this, which is what's made it now, making it as a team concept where they haven't had adversity, where they've been down in a series. But I look at the first game of the playoffs St. Louis. Now they get in that Monday, October third, I believe, and then Friday's game one, and it was kind of like, hey, they snuck in. We're glad that they're there, okay. And then they're down two nothing deep into the game. Yeah. And you know who knows if, if they keep that pitcher in, if we're still here. But to get that rally, to get those six runs late in the game like that out of nowhere, I mean that was adversity, man. I mean I'm looking at. All three of these games in the LCS, all three home games, three, four, five. There were, I mean, good old Gene Segura. I give him credit because he rallied back after he had an up and down game three. And I'm just like, man, um, the only, you know what I thought about? And I, if I was better at tech, I would have done something. Gene Segura, game three. LCS, so this past Friday night, reminded me of Kim Batiste. Kim Batiste. Game one, yeah. 93 LCS, where he's the GOAT, and you're like, oh, man. But then he winds up being the hero. I thought about the 93 Phils, Kim Batiste, game one against the Braves, and what he did there, getting the game-winning hit to make up for the era. Gene Segura reminded me of that in game three. Like, I just felt that. Like, it just was a flashback. And then these last two games, game four, down 4 nothing in the rally, They've overcome adversity, overcome some, let's be real, bad defense. I know they're, they're sensitive to the bad defense, the, are, the Phillies are, but I'm like, you got to own it. You guys are not a good defensive team, and you're no, struggling in these playoffs. They're, they're a really bad defensive team. Like, yeah. you, can, you can say that. Yeah, and they're struggling. And to me, that's my biggest fear, honestly, going into the World Series. If you make those errors, the Astros will capitalize. And right. not only will you lose, you'll be like the Yankees and get swept. Because the Yankees made defensive errors, and that's why they got swept. So I'm like, you can, you got to get this at least to where it's not hard. It's not awful. hurting you. Yeah, yeah, it's not hurting you. Right. <laughs> you know? So they've had some adv- – that's what's made this unbelievable. It, they've had – they've had. it's been a miraculous run where this is not the team – I don't care what anyone says that you think would pull this off. Right. It's just not. Right. And then the thing is, like, if, if you would have told me in the off season, you know, after they sign Castellanos, you know, after they sign, you know, Schwarber, like, you know, after they make these upgrades, right, Dave Dombrowski comes in and kind of like, you know what, like, he does what Dave Dombrowski does, right? Like, if he has prospects, he's going to trade them away. Bring in big names to try to win, try to win the World Series, and um, you know he trades former number one pick Mickey Moniak for, you know Thor Noah Syndergaard, which is it working out? 
I don't know, but um, yeah, it's, it's, uh... yeah, it's it's suspect, but I mean, that's what he does, right? But you, if you would have told me last off season, like yeah, this Philly team is going to make a deep playoff run, I would have believed you. Like I, I would have believed you, especially bring like looking at the guys they had already, looking at the guys they added. I'm with you there, but then looking at the season and how the season played out and how up and down they were. You know how many games behind the Mets they were. You know what I mean, and the Braves. Like it, it was just it didn't. It was not looking good. And then they go over in this nice run. Then Harper gets hurt. Mm-hmm. You know, and then the, you right there immediately think, all right, like Steve Phillips was on MLB Network talking about the Phillies are done. Like you know what I mean. Like and I remember him doing that. And I was like, he's right. Like they're done. Yeah. Like there's no way this team's going to continue playing well. And then then he comes back and then struggles big time in September. Harper had a terrible September. Might and have the came team back struggled. To, right. He might have came back too soon, in my opinion. But team struggled. Harper struggled big time. They 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 barely get in. They got swept by the Cubs at, towards the end of the season. And you, I I thought the season was over when they got swept there. But like you mentioned, they they just kind of like backdoored in. And um, but with a lineup, my thinking was this: when they got in, it's like one when this lineup hits. Well, it's one of the best lineups in the league you know, hands down, National or American League. Like, this lineup, these guys, when they're on, it's a stacked lineup, one through six or seven, you know. And then you got that one-two punch, you know, and you start with Zach Wheeler and Aaron Nola. Nola, And um, that's that's going to be two really good pitched well games, you know, in the playoffs. Then you got this back end in the bullpen with Sir Anthony Dominguez and Jose Alvarado, who are super lights out. If you can get to these guys, which they did in the last game, but it didn't work out. But like they, they're built for a playoff run. They're built like a playoff team, and you don't really hear that a lot in baseball. But these, this team is, in my opinion. No, you're right. I'll be honest. What I thought with the moves is, if everything goes right, you could, which they did. Maybe I didn't think they were going to beat the Mets or the Braves, but sneak into a wild card and, hey, you get there and maybe you build off of this. This is experience for the future, all right, of how to, like, you know, like we see traditionally with teams in sports. You get in, you get to a spot, and you, you take your lumps, and then you learn from that, hopefully, and then you build on that experience. So I thought, yeah, if everything goes right, they can get in. I still question the bullpen. I'll be honest. I still question besides Wheeler, and I loved Aaron Nola, but Nola, to me, after that, Cy Young potential kind of year a few years ago seemed like there's the talent, but he flames out. But and he's he can't off. Go. He's getting rocked. Like you and know what I mean. Like and, and he didn't seem like he could be consistent like that workhorse. He seems like he flames it, and it's not like let him fight through it. It's like you see it, take him out because he's not fighting through it. I'll be honest. It's like it's just downhill, and so I was not confident that we have a. Do we have a potential maybe for a one-two punch? I didn't feel like it's definitely we have it. And throughout the year, I didn't feel like that's a lock one-two punch that will kill it in the playoffs, like a Schilling right. and a Johnson in 01. I thought I like Wheeler. Nola, who knows? When Nola won the clincher a few weeks ago at Houston to get us in, I said, okay. I'm like, we just need him for a little bit of a run. That's a confidence-boosting game he pitched. It's maybe the best game I've ever seen him pitch. Right. And I'm like, he can build off of it into the playoff. And that made me feel a little bit better because I'm like, all right. But I'll be lying. Even the bullpen. We talked about it personally. They mm-hmm. brought Zach Eflin. Yeah. And I'm like, woof. Yeah. What are we doing? Um, it, it w- I'll say this, too, though. And I, I maybe I'm going off on a little bit something. Little, this is you know, and this is why I say this is not just about for local Philadelphia. This is a bigger scale. Baseball, when you've listened to us, we talk about the analytics of the game and how – I don't want to put words in your mouth, Jose. I understand it. I'm not opposed to bringing some of it in. I feel like it's taken over way too much and it's hurt mm-hmm. the game. What okay. I've loved about this Phillies run, and I, in a lot of ways some of the playoffs outside of it too, like the whole MLB playoffs – it, the Phillies have brought to me the the mixture. There's some you see analytic thinking, but it brings back. We've questioned Topper's decisions. We're like not like knocking them, but we're like, oh, would you do this? Would you do that? That's what made baseball great as a fan. 
Right. There was an air of mystery. There was an air of debate. What pitcher's better? Oh, would you have made this decision? Do you keep him in there? Do you take him out? Blah, blah, blah. Baseball the past, I don't know, at least five to ten years, it's just been like, well, he's pitching lights out, but he's hit, you know, 70 pitches. He's out. Yeah, so there's yeah. no all, – all, all, the only debate I have watching a baseball game of people is we miss the old way. Like, there's no, like – debate yep. but with fans it's like oh do you like him having f i do like him having eflin there should he keep sir anthony in longer yeah no did he bring him into what about jose what about bringing in ranger here what about did he keep wheeler out too long topper's kind of going with his you know gut and his eye and, and knowing his team and i love that it's bringing it back you know oh do you want schwarber as a leadoff guy do you change this lineup oh he didn't change it all these things that like i love that we're having that debate i feel like i haven't had it for so long in baseball and it's made baseball boring. Yeah. Oh, 100%. And I will say this, there's a couple of games. He should have left Wheeler in there. There's a couple of games. He should have left Sir Anthony in there, but you know, like you said, it's a mix of both. Um, he's, you know, Rob Thompson, he's, he's, and they keep saying that he's like a baseball guy. Like I hate that term where like, you're all baseball guys. You're in the middle yeah, yeah. East, but he's, he is old school. You know, he's been doing this for a long time. He's been a bench coach, you know, for, for the Yankees and those those playoff runs and World Series runs. And um he knows he knows what he's doing. You know what I mean? Like and again, like you mentioned Wheeler, like I know Wheeler was like at ninety something pitches and he was still pitching well the last game. Gets gives up one hit in the seventh and I was like, he's gone. Like he's gonna take mm-hmm. him right out. He's not even gonna give him an opportunity to kind of clean this up and um and it almost cost him. You know, but again, he does that. He brings in, you know, uh, Sir Anthony in that pouring rain, throws a couple wild pitches. And I'm like, this thing is like, now you got to bring Alvarado. Who are you going to bring in after that? And then it's just like, you know, he's bringing in another guy and another guy. He brings in Ranger out of nowhere. I didn't even think of Ranger. You know, Ranger was supposed to start game three. Well, no, I'm sorry. Game six, seven. Yeah. 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 And like, you're thinking, you're bringing him in. He's like, I'm going, I'm going for the win right now. You know what I mean? And that's that's cool to see that. Like, I I can appreciate that. And Ranger came in and did what his, did his job and, and closed the game out. So, I, I agree. He's pushing a lot of the right buttons. I, I will say that. Like, I, I'll give him all the credit. He's been pushing them for a while. And you know, you talked about Girardi when the Phillies made that switch. I just think a lot of the players weren't getting along with Girardi, and I think that kind of shifted like the whole mindset of the club. So that, that was, that's cool to see, but he's, he's pushing the right buttons, man. Got him an extension, you know, so it's, it's, it's good to see. But it's something, I mean, we could look on San Diego. Everyone said, why did you not bring in the left-hander to face Hater. Bryce Harper? Yeah. Yeah. Why did he not bring in Hater? And hater has been lights out. Why do you not do that? And I feel like he went with the analytical kind of move there. He didn't go with just logical baseball, in my opinion. He didn't. He should just went lefty versus lefty. Like, well, I got to bring him in to face Bryce Harper. Well, there's reports that Hater is like that closer dude, like that doesn't want to pitch more than one inning. And there was like rumors when he was in, you know, when he was in Milwaukee that that was the case. Like he did not want to pitch more than three outs, you know, and. They were saying, like, they don't know if that's – because, again, this was the eighth inning. They don't know if that was the case or he just kind of felt like, you know, he wasn't going to do anything. So, But that's the problem. Know. Right. And, and, and traditional I, – I, I'm totally for advancing life but advancing sports, and you can't just stay – even though we're sports history, it's about learning from the past to improve the present and the future. That's what we're here for, in my opinion. In the playoffs, that goes out the window, though, because there yeah. is, no, and then also you're down three one, so there is no tomorrow. And he hasn't pitched; he pitched one time this whole series, right? So like that goes out the. It's not like it's June, like you know what I mean. Right. It's like, hey, you rest up later. We we we'll figure that out when we go at. But he's Diego. rested. He's exactly rested. Like, but that's why resting. it makes no sense. That's why to me that was an analytical move, mm-hmm. and that cost him. St. Right. Louis, analytical move, taking him out. They're up 2 nothing. He's killing the Phillies. That cost him. And that's why I've loved the Phillies run because it brings it back. I've been sitting there with everybody, going out to places, and we're talking about it. And even though we're all on the Phillies, what do you think about this? I don't know. I'm like, no, I believe in this move. Or they go, I don't know. And they've all worked, really. Yeah. But we can have that conversation again. I couldn't have that conversation. For the past years, it's just like, this is what it is. All right, he's taking them out. 
Yeah, All what right, did the numbers the, say? Yep. Yeah, the numbers say this, so they're doing this, and it's just like, it's boring. I've loved that we've had that kind of talk, and it's made the magic of baseball come back, honestly, for me. I can speak for me. I love this game. It's kind of fizzled the past few years, like, oh, yeah. a lot. And this run, and I know it's a local run, but I'm going to say it, and we don't know where it's going to end up. So these other teams won it all. This, to me, is right there, up there with the 88 Dodgers. It's up there with 04 Boston. It's up there with 2016 Chicago Cubs of just, like, what am I watching? Now, there's different reasons, maybe, of why it's so crazy. But this is one of those improbable runs, man. I, I really believe it. No, People I, may say that's blasphemous, but I believe it. No, I'm, I'm with you, man. Because, again, when you – and this is a like a debate I have with myself all the time. It's like, what would you rather have as a fan? If we've talked about it on the show, I know me and you have talked about it, Jeremy, off the show. But it's like, would you want? Would you rather have as a fan, like just to watch it one season, whatever the case, like that one team that you know coming in is going to be a great team, you know, probably like Houston, what Houston is going through. We knew that they were going to be really good. Or would you want that like? good team that goes on that like improbable run you know what i'm saying like for me the the improbable run is it's it's more of a fun watch you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. like is like if you you don't see this coming and then next thing you know like it just starts happening and it's like building you're like you know what man they just beat the cardinals but now they're playing the braves this thing is over like you know what i mean mm-hmm. and then they start playing the braves and it's a best of five you know and they they win that game and it's like oh they might have a shot here. And then I was already thinking, like, man, if they get through the Braves, they're not beating the Dodgers, man. Like, you know what I mean? Like, and then it's like, whoa, the Padres are up 3 1 in that or 2 1, right. whatever it was. And it's like, right. I was just telling everybody, if they play the Padres, they can beat the Padres. Like, that, they, mm-hmm. they could do that. Very similar teams. And then when you're playing these Padres, and I'm like, dude, like, and then you're seeing Harper just do. And again, I want to circle back to Harper, man. And I'm going, I'm going everywhere. Like, I, I'm not. Same, same. You know what I mean? Like, so. That that's fine. Like that's this is how I'm feeling right now. But let's. I want to. I'm trying to think of another baseball playoff run like this in my memory that I can remember. It's like, and I really can't. I think that one run. Um. Oh my God, his name is blanking on me. Um. Beltran, Carlos Beltran, when he went when he gets traded to to the Astros. Um. He went on an amazing playoff run. I can't mm-hmm. remember the year, but he went on a just as amazing playoff run here. But I, I and he had big hits, but like that's the only one I can really go to. But we're looking I'm looking at Harper. You know I'm always gonna look at these stats real quick, Jeremy. So he's got 43 at bats, he scored 10 runs, he's got 18 hits, five home runs, eleven RBIs, zero No, I'm sorry, I'm skipping that. Four nineteen, that's a four nineteen average, four forty four on base percentage, and OPS of of one point three five one. Like, that's like Barry Bonds, San Francisco Giants, like, numbers. You know what I mean? Like, those are all-time great numbers. And the thing is, not only does he have the great numbers, but we've been talking about it already. It's like the moments where this stuff is happening. You know what I mean? Like, and it's like big hit after another big hit after another big hit. It's just, again, I, I, I wanted to collect, put the lid on the Harper talk, but um, well, it's just an amazing run, man. One of my favorite – sporting events ever one of my favorite series and for those who are watching us on youtube you can go to our part podcast archive bigger the game with Demi and jose and jose knew i wanted to do this it was two years ago but it was the last time the phillies and astros met the playoffs in my opinion the greatest league championship series ever it's was 1980 series. and in that when it comes we'll keep it local but for phillies history i've always said the biggest hit in Philly's history was game five, top of the 10th, 7-7, final game. Gary Maddox gets that hit to put the Phillies, they get over the hump finally into the World Series, and they go on to win their first championship. That, to me, has still been the biggest hit in franchise history. Last Sunday, Bryce Harper rivals it. I want to ask you, I'll put you on the spot. Did Bryce Harper overtake Gary Maddox, in your opinion? Now, is that the biggest hit in Philly's history? I'm I'm still going to say no. I'm going to say no, be, only because again, like 
that Phillies team that Gary Maddox was on the early eight, eight the early eighties, um, that that was a great team. Like that's like an all time great team, and they just couldn't get over that hump, you know, year in and year out. And that moment, like you knew, like they were going to win the World Series. You know what I'm saying? Like you, it, it was over, and they went on another run, right? So, and I think also. They were bad for so long at that point. You know what I mean? Like at least our generation, and I definitely want to talk about this as well. So I'm glad you kind of opened the door. Um, at least we have 08. You know what I mean? Like we, our generation has 2008 and Phillies winning the World Series. They're going back in 09, you know, the following the season and losing, but they went back with that great team. You know, that that generation they didn't have that. You know what I mean? Like they didn't have the great teams before. You got to understand, like, if you're watching this, I'm sure you're a Phillies fan, but if you don't know, you don't know. Like the Phillies as an organization have the most losses in sports history, not baseball mm-hmm. history, not in sports history, you know, and you know, they've been Phillies have been around for a very long time, like a hundred I think it's 139 years. They've made eight yeah. World Series appearances, which is one every what, 17 years, 17 it's, and some it's change. It's not a good it's not a good ratio. Right. It's a terrible ratio. And so that to me that that Gary Monarch hit to put him over, finally put him over there and to get him in the World Series to me would always be number one. But this one, again, I agree with you there, me. This is one A. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. and this is this is the biggest hit I've ever seen. You know what I'm saying? In Phillies. In my my career of watching Phillies baseball. Right. right. Yeah. In my opinion. No, I, I I think this I agree. I like that point you made. This is the biggest that we we weren't born in, you know, in nineteen eighty. So this is I the was. biggest. Oh, you were born. Sorry, but you were just born, right? I was a little pup. Yeah, yeah. I don't remember that. So, um, in my lifetime, that's the biggest hit in Philly's history. Gary Maddox is still number one because a it's hard. Nothing like the first, right? So that that led to the first World Championship. That was a deciding game. So, like for people who don't know it. Just a mad like there was a five game LCS. They was at the fifth and final game. So imagine like Bryce hitting that in game seven. You yeah. know, not, not that not to diminish what he did, but like Gary's like, there was no tomorrow. Yeah. It wasn't like oh they're like if Bryce strikes out, it sucks. And I didn't want to go to San Diego for them two games, but the Phillies still do have they're still up three two. This, yeah, right. Where like uh, this was a series is tied to a piece of extra innings if they don't get it done. The Strohs were going to their first World Series against a great Astros team. You know what I yeah. mean? Yeah. Like, so, so like him getting that hit and knocking out the demons. You know, they had lost in the LCS in seventy six, seventy seven, seventy eight. Right. Um, and people called them chokers. People said they couldn't do it. That's still so. You know, we're sports history. So to, to give props still because people overlook that. I feel that yeah. series and they overlook Gary Maddox. He got a clutch hit, but the biggest hit in a franchise's history in that game. So I'm still with you. That's number one. But yeah, this I like that. One A is is Bryce Harper's hit. Who do you who, just out of curiosity, where would you go after that? After Bryce Harper? Because I have one in mind, but for a singular hit. Um I might uh, Matt Stairs' home run was pretty special. Ooh, I didn't even think of that one. I so I I think Stairs' home run in in, in 08, um is is maybe my next one after that is, is probably yeah, Stairs' that's, home run. That's a moment I I will never forget where I was at watching Same. that. You know, I had just got back from a vacation and I just finally got I got home in time to catch the game because they were playing in in L A. Um, and when he hit that thing, I was literally sitting on the floor and I jumped out. Like, oh yeah, that was another bomb. For me, I always think of like Jay, like Jimmy Rollins, like that triple he hit. Um, can't remember what what year that was. I don't know if that was 08 or 07, maybe. I don't it was know. It's either 07 or 08. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was one of the, it might have been 07, but now they didn't go on and win the World Series in 07. But it was just one of those like moments where it was like this team is here now. Like you know what I mean? Like they. They're because I look, man, like everybody goes to that 93 team, which I we both had the same roughly the same feelings about that team now. But that was my first 
again, the Phillies were so <laughs> terrible for so long. You know, I, I can remember I, I played baseball like 20 years, man, like 18 to 20 years. I remember I was playing in his league. They would give us tickets and we wouldn't even go. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like they were yeah. terrible, terrible team to watch. Same. And then that 93 run, what made it so special is they just came out of nowhere. They were a bunch of guys with mullets and taking steroids and stuff like that. And, you know, they go on this amazing run. They lose, obviously, to the Blue Jays. And we all know what happened there, right? Um, that was my first taste of, like, playoff baseball, stuff like that. Then they go on another run of, like, losing and it being t- another terrible team for another terrible organization for years and years and years and years and years. And, years. and then – you know, we get like that early 2000 taste and I need to play off baseball. You know what I mean? Like we, we've talked about it off the air. Like I, I needed this personally. Like I love baseball. Like it's my first true love. It's the first thing I played ever as a kid. It was the first thing I was really good at. Like I absolutely love baseball. It was a, it was a big deal in the neighborhood I grew up in. If you didn't play like what? Like people looked at you like you were weird. And yeah, it, it's Play is nothing like playing baseball. Well, Absolutely baseball like of uh, uh, I think hockey's kind of like it too now, but may yes, baseball has become very localized. Yeah, where it's become just like your, which it wasn't always the case, but I feel like over the years, like people these local networks team that are getting these big network deals, and it's like, yeah, you care about your team in your region, and when I was growing up, probably the same for you. You you care about the whole league, right? But I feel like it's changing now where it becomes very local and you're caring about your team and that division that they're in. And it's like, all right, I'll see you at the all-star break and then I'll see you in the playoffs, whoever. And you, you're not saying you don't know who other players are now, but you're really just watching your – like the Sunday night baseball game, back then it didn't matter who it was. I was going to watch it. Right. Now I feel like if your team's not in it, you don't watch other teams. And that wasn't the case. So I do feel like – that change has made it where your local team, I feel if you love that sport and football or basketball and they miss the playoffs, you're still watching the season and you're still going to watch the playoffs. Baseball has changed, at least I think for me, but a lot of people where if your local team's not in it, you, if you're a big enough fan, you might keep track and see what, but you're not in it like that. And that was not always the case with me. I used to watch, like you said, 93 to 07, the Phillies did not make the playoff. I watched all those postseasons and knew who was good. And I knew our team sucked, but I still was in it and seeing and, oh, are they going to beat? That has changed. And this has helped bring that back um, for just pure enjoyment. And honestly, if they would have won and it would have been just dominant, okay, like I still would take it. But the fact that how they're doing it, it's it's beyond impressive. It really is. And I'm glad you brought up 93 because I'm sure people are making that comparison where I think this is more impressive and not as far as being improbable because I think 93 going into the year, the expectations were lower. Right. But 93, if you look at it, that, that team won more games during the year than this team. And 93, they jumped out hot and were in first place, and they held first place throughout the year. Right. So right. it was crazy. But then by the time you're going throughout, you're like, all right, just don't blow it. That's my first memory of baseball with 93. Don't blow this. Like We have a lead. We've got to cleanse the division. But it's like, yeah, they're going to make the playoffs. Like you said, in September, we were thinking they're not making the playoffs in 2022. Yeah. So no, for them I- to get in and do this, it's crazy. I, I I was just thinking about that too the other day and like trying to compare these two because again a lot of people are doing that and I agree hundred percent like at least that team like you know once May came around like I was like this team is like good and they might make the playoffs like obviously it was a different playoff format but you know and they're lucky that he played the Giants in the playoffs but mm-hmm. you know they I knew they were going to the playoffs at least by the summer like this team was on a roll. And it was just a lot of stuff happening that they were just, you know, I remember Mariana Duncan hit the grand slam off Lee Smith, you know, mm-hmm. he, in home in the vet. I remember that. And I was like, yo, and Lee Smith was lights out. And I was like, they're, they're going to the playoffs, you know? And, and I, I just, this is different. Like this is, this is different. And, you know, again, 
once they got in, I had a funny feeling like, you know what? They're going to make some noise. I didn't think it was going to be this, but they were going to make some noise. But I, this is incredible. Like straight up, like it's incredible. But that Friday, that first game, they're down two nothing, and I'm like Wheeler battled, but okay. And I'm like, all right, well maybe, I'm like, I can't complain. I just wanted them to get in. I'm like, maybe they can extend it to Sunday. They can win tomorrow with Nola. Um, when they got those six runs in the eighth, I was like, this is bizarre, man. Yeah. Um, and let's not forget. For our, those Cardinal fans out there, I respect these guys. We ended the careers of two fut- Pujols and Molina. We ended their two future Hall of Famers. Like, and to me, the Cardinals have been the toughest challenge. I know that was a two out of three. That's the toughest challenge the Phillies have had so far was that first series. Yeah. Uh, both games were close. Both games could have gone either way. And it was like, man, like they ended it for Molina and Pujols. I feel like that was like what people thought was the dream right. kind of run. We're going to see these two future Hall of Famers have one last run. And it's like, nah, this Phillies team ended it. Giant killers. And it and it's it's it was almost full circle because their run started against that Phillies team. We were talking about that, that 08, 09, 2010 team. Like, that's when it started. You know what I mean? When Ryan mm-hmm. Howard got hurt, we blew the Achilles out. Who they who they were playing? They were playing the Cardinals, you know. So, and who was on first base, like screaming at that second baseman to throw him the ball? It was Albert Pujols, like. So it, it was it was almost like full circle for me, and I was like pretty okay with that happening. You know? I wanted, to, I was yeah, retire him because that the Phillies shouldn't have lost that series. I think it was what twenty ten, right? They should have lost twenty eleven. Twenty eleven. Wow. Yeah. That was, 20, yeah, that was the last the one. Giants, right. Yeah. Yeah. Cody Bleep and Ross in twenty ten. And that bullpen, um, oh, yeah. that Giants bullpen was amazing. But this, um, I gotta ask: Do you think it's black? I, you know, I said we don't know where this is going to end. This could be a pennant. Is it blasphemous to say this? Like it's up there. It feels like the '88 Dodger. Like those are historic runs for teams, and they all those teams were world champs. '88 Dodgers, I did not witness. Yeah. But 04, I remember like it was yesterday. Yep. The Cubs, I remember like it was yesterday. And this feels the same way. It just felt feels magical and yep. just unreal in its moments. Those two those teams have moments that I'll never forget and they're not my teams, but just loving the game, being a fan of sports. I'll remember Big Poppy in game 4 and 5 and just going crazy and Joe Buck's call. I remember the rain delay in game seven of the 16 World Series and, you know, LeBron screaming after the home run by Davis. And then it's like, oh, man, like the cut. I was like, I felt bad for them. I'm like, so they I, really man. are cursed, man. You, I'm like, to come back from 3-1 and then to lose like this, I'm like, they're never going to get over this, man. And if for them to get over the hump, like this has that feeling to me. It's just it's special. It just really is. Yeah, and again, I wasn't like invested in that '88 series. I do remember who the Dodgers beat, you know, in that in that series with the Oakland A's and the Bash Brothers, Caseco, McGuire, that amazing Oakland A's team. This feels very similar to that, you know what I mean? Like, and again, like Houston's a great team. Like, I mean, again, you talked about like how baseball is like coming has become localized. If I were to tell you, Jeremy, uh, there's a baseball team that's gone to four World Series in the last, what, six or seven years? Six straight LCS appearances. Like, that's that's unheard of, you know, and nobody talks, really talks about it. Because you know they cheated. I mean? like, well, that too. But still, they were there. You know what I mean? Like, and they, they Jose, got there. They haven't cheated in the last couple of years, though. No, they haven't. But if they didn't cheat, I would say we should do an episode about them because this is a run, and I would feel you because I'm like, man – I never thought I would root for the Yankees, but ever since that scandal, I kind of want the Yankees to, like, beat them because I'm like, yeah, y'all cheated. Like, we should be praising that team more. Honestly, I like Dusty Baker a lot. That's the only reason why I don't hate them even more. Yeah. Like, if there's no Dusty Baker, then I'm like, if we lose to them, I'd be like, all right, well, Dusty got a ring. Other than that, I can't stand this team because you did cheat, and you did – this run should be praised, but I struggle to praise it because – you have not won a world championship since you since, cheated. 
right? Now you've gotten there, and that's to be talked about. But you haven't gotten over the hump since you cheated, and that I don't know. I I feel some kind of way about it too. Which I don't take away. This is a great team this year and a hell of a run. It's a historic run, but yeah. there's a big thing with it. Why I'm like I can't us being sport historians. I don't fully embrace it like I would have. They don't have the scandal. I'm like, man, even the Phillies run, I'm like, you know, we talk about the Phillies, but you know, in the future, we got to talk about the Astros, man. Like, this is impressive. I, I don't feel that. I'm going to tell you the vibes I'm getting there, I mean, with this series. I'm getting 01 Sixers vibes with this, with this series. And I, I'm mm-hmm. going to tell you, like, I knew in 01 – with that Sixers run and going again, as another team started off extremely hot. We knew they were making the playoffs right very early on, right? And Iverson was incredible. And I felt like the NBA Finals, this is over. Like, you know what I mean? Like, now they won the first game, and I was like, wait a minute. Like, it brought me right back. I was like, now they got a shot. Like, they've been doing this all year. Like, here we go. And then obviously, we know what happened. You know, the Lakers won four straight and it was over with. Am I, am I wrong for that? You know what I mean. Like I'm, I'm all, all about this team right now. I, I just, I got those vibes. No, I think it's right. If I had, I'm not a betting man. If I had to bet, I would bet the Astros. That doesn't say a lot because you know, I. Yeah, I would have bet the Braves. Like if I was a right, betting, I would have bet like, the Braves. I probably would have bet the Cardinals. The only right. one I wouldn't have bet is like you said, the Padres was like, oh, they can beat them. Yeah. If the Dodgers would have won, I would have bet the Dodgers. I'll be real yeah. with you. Yeah. So it doesn't mean a lot. I've thought to say it's funny we think that way. I thought about the 0-1 Sixers too. I feel like this team has a better chance going into it than the 0-1 Sixers. Yes, did. yes, yes. There's more of an argument where the 0-1 Sixers. I'm like Iverson can win one. He's that great. He can win one. I go. He can't beat that team by himself four times. No. Like he can't do that. Um, now with. It, just one little quick thing with the 01 Sixers. Game, they went five games. The Sixers win game one, close. Games two and three were down to the wire. Yes. So, so that's what made me go, even though, like, game two, they come back and they lose. But I'm like, oh, they're getting to them. They're playing them tough. That made me go, can they do something here? Game three was Shaq fouls out and they lose. Robert Horry hits some shots. But I'm like, okay. Then the last two games, they had demolished them. They were done, yeah. Yeah, and they were banged up. But I feel like the Phillies, Houston's lineup does not scare me against our pitching. I'll be quite honest. Yeah, it's their pitching. It's like they're maybe all-time great. It, it, it reminds me of uh, – I hate to say it, it's kind of got the. I'm not going to put them with Maddox, Lavin, Smoltz. No, but I like the A's of the early 2000s, like that. You know, Zito and Zito, Boulder, yeah. and you know, like it has that that big three. I feel it's like that. Um, yeah, it's stacked. Bullpen stacked. Guys coming in with heat. You know, like it, it's 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 going to be tough. But the Phillies had that lineup that if you know, because. All this lineup needs is a, and, and the, we're seeing it throughout. Like, it's not like the entire lineup is like hitting well. It's like one series, it's like two, three guys. The next series, now the only thing is the one constant is Harper in each series. But, you know, at first it was Harper and I'm trying, I'm blanking, but it, it was a couple guys who just got hot against the Cardinals. And then against the Braves, it was Harper, a couple other guys, right? Schwarber couldn't do anything against the Braves. You know, Schwarber comes now, hits a couple home runs. Reese Hoskins hits a couple home runs. Like, you know, it, it's just been – it's been Harper and a couple other guys. Like, Yeah, I think Car- like Harper and Baum. Alec Baum played right, really well. Right, right, right. You know, and then, you he know, did he, well. Yeah, he was – he needs – he has – he had a terrible series against the Padres. Like, there's been guys who normally hit well. Gene rarely strikes out. He's a great contact hitter. He's been striking out a lot. He was striking out a lot against the Padres. So, there's guys who can play better. And if you continue to get what you're getting from Harper, you're going to get what you're going to get from Schwarber. Like, he's going to hit moon shots, and, you know, it's just that's going to happen. Reese is going to be super streaky. But if you can get Bohm and, like, Segura to get on base and, you know, and Stott, Stott, I really like Stott. Like, he has – He's impressed me. He's had some great at-bats. He's got – I love his approach at the plate. You know, he's 
he's really impressed me. I think they might have something there at shortstop. And you know, that's but, what I'm looking at. Honestly, the key I say you got to play better defense, and when you can't, that defense is not going to. One yeah. mistake like that, Houston can take advantage of it, and that pitching. Yeah, you can't drop a double play to end the inning because it's yeah, it's going to come back to you. So I think number one, the defense. Number two, you hit the point that I feel. You definitely need every, but every series, every team needs. You need your big bats to come up. But we all know that right. shit. That's not like rocket sign. I'm looking at Marsh and Gene and Alec Baum and Stout. Like I need like the bottom, like that six through nine to you know what? Do some small ball, get on base, creates like help create the runs. Like that's what I need. Like from them to make me feel like all right here. Yeah. Like I need those guys to just make some like you said, Stout, I like that he's just found pitches off. He's patient. Right. He's got a great he's approach. Make, yeah, he's making guys work. Like we we I feel like we haven't had guys like that in the lineup. Like they're not the stars, but they're workmen kind of guys. And we right. we need that. And other great teams in baseball, but like Phillies past, we had dudes like that. We haven't, and that's why I'm like you said, I like that. I see that he's taking those, he's making, oh, a 10 pitch at bat, like really working that pitcher, getting that pitch count up. We need it. I need those guys to step up for us to have a chance to win this. I, I'll i tell you what, though, Jose, if they can if they can split in Houston, it's that uh-oh, like, because I just feel like, and let's talk about this real quick. Fan, you know, it's won and lost on the field slash court slash ice, whatever. This home field advantage has been huge, man. Like, and I do feel like I wanted like to bring that up too. Yeah, go ahead. They, they've, they've helped swing some game. They, I'm not saying that the fans have won a game. The players win it. You know, decisions by Topper win it. But they, that home field advantage, like you feel it to me throughout this whole run. You feel it. So that was going to be my question. Citizens Bank Park, is it the best home field advantage in baseball? Because since it's open, the Phillies in the playoffs are 21-9 and nine at Citizens Bank Park. Like, yeah, Phillies has some great teams. But to me, you know, these guys, this team is feeding off this, this fan. They haven't lost a game here yet, you know, in this playoff run. Like, these guys are feeding off of this this – this craziness and again we haven't had playoffs here in philly in 11 years so that's a big part of it is it the best home field advantage in baseball and we got I'm some great no. ones we got some great yeah ones. i'm gonna say it's not i'm gonna say what has made this special i feel all right i'll take this back this may sound bad when it's the freshness of it so now in 07 and 08 when we had that long playoff drought it was great it didn't last though when they people got. I'm I'm gonna hey we're Philly fans ourselves. I'm gonna call us out, so I'm not pointing the finger everywhere. It got complacent though when that run went into year three, four, five. It wasn't the same. And if you you talked about that 2010 and then 2011 with the Cardinals, hear how the crowd was in 07 and 08 for a playoff game in 2011. It was just fear. It wasn't rocking. It was disappointing. Isn't that any fan base though? Like, kind of, they get used to the winning, and you're expecting your team to do this no, and that. Not all fan bases. I, not, I mean, about baseball and just in sports in general. I, I'm keeping it to baseball. Yeah. And baseball? Uh, no, I don't think so. I don't okay. think the Red Sox fan base has gone when they had their runs. I don't feel like it got soft. I still feel like that was the Red Sox. I don't feel like the Cardinals. Their success, I don't feel like that's gone down. I feel like they have great fans and say, I can yeah, they have they have amazing they, fans. Maybe there. the best baseball fans, I think. Uh, yeah, honestly, the Cardinals. So yeah. I don't feel like it's gone down there. Um, I, I no, I, I don't think every. I think a lot of fan bases can get complacent, but that that's the point. Like I, I want to see it, and now it depends on the team success. So hopefully, we can keep this going in the next few years. But is it still rocking? So we've shown that, hey, we're not too uppity. Like, I know people don't think that, but I kind of was feeling that, like, we, you know, oh, we don't have that, to vet no more, but yeah. we're too uppity. Yeah. No, I I agree. Like, that 2010, 2011, it was just like, oh, we're back in the playoffs? Yeah, like, we're supposed to be here. Like, now, the, 
you know, that Phillies organization at that point in time, you know, it was first Pat Gillick and then became Ruben Amaro Jr. But, you know, they were spending big bucks, like, on these players. You know, like, they, they were going all out to, to win the World Series every year. Even, you know, we look at this Padres and Phillies, you know, series. Like, people go, oh, man, these teams, I'm surprised these teams are here. I'm not, like... Phillies are like the fifth, fourth highest payroll. Padres are the fifth highest payroll. Like these teams are built to be in these situations. You know, they they should have been here. Now, the Padres were missing Tatis. Like if Tatis mm-hmm. is there, maybe different, different story. story, right? Like they they they're probably a higher seed. Like it's they would have been a much much better team. That team next year is going to be really really good. Um, but again, like I'm not surprised that the Phillies were playing the Padres in the beginning of the season. I would have said, yeah, that's probably going to happen. Now, obviously, they didn't make the trade for Soto until later in the year. But when once that happened, I was like, oh, this team is going to be. And for Hater, they traded for Hater. It was like, oh yeah, this team is good. So, you know, I'm 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 there with you though. There, I mean, going to, like going back to the, the start of the conversation, this this fan base and and this home field has been amazing, man. And I've seen, you know, you you look at. I've seen that Harper home run like 200 times already. I've watched that video and it's not only just the home run, it's, it's the reaction of the crowd that gets me, man. And the different angles, Fox is doing a great job with this telecast. I, I want to talk to you about that as well, but like some of those camera angles they have and like, the, you know, it, it's just some great stuff. The mics that are there that you can hear every pitch, every, every time the ball hits the bat, like it's, this has been really fun and I'm, it's making me watch other playoff games it's just, I love baseball, but again, like, I think Philly is a good baseball, like city, mm-hmm. and it's really showing out in these these this playoff run. So I, I'm 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 one hundred percent there with you. I think the, it, it showed that Philly is a good baseball, a great baseball city. I think um, it had been a while that since we had a run. Phillies don't, as you heard people listen to the stats. It's rare to have a good year, let alone a run. Yeah. So it was very different for the Phillies back at years, you know, 20, 2007 to 2011. So I do get that. Um, I believe it's the hunger. And I do feel like when it's been that long and then it's a run that's been amazing. And also it wasn't a guarantee because, you know, the way this playoff setup is that first round, all three games being in St. Louis, I thought, man, we may not get a home. So I'm like, well, we're in, but I wish we would have had a home playoff game just to get the buzz. And when we won, and it was like, oh, we we're guaranteed home playoff games, you knew it was going to be great. The most impressive thing about this is we know, number one, it's an Eagle City. So the Eagles having a 6-0 and start, and I feel like they're getting their love. They're not, like, forgotten, but the Phillies aren't, like, put down. The Phillies are right there, if not more, getting that attention and rightfully so yeah i think is great like the eagles had a bye week this past sunday the eagles were playing they're behind the fills like i'm watching the phillies first and then all right well let's go to the eagles but i gotta watch this game like and i'm glad that's just making me feel good like the eagles having that run but the phillies are getting the right attention throughout the city um and and that's another thing for me there me it's like and again, I'm not like saying the Phillies are winning the World Series, but even the way it's being like it's laid out, like television wise, right? The Eagles play Sunday, obviously. Phillies don't play Sunday. They play they play Friday, Saturday, Monday. Right. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, Monday, Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday. They're off Thursday. The Eagles play Thursday night in Houston. Well, they play against Houston. Yeah, in Houston. They do play in Houston. Then they play again if there's like a game seven or whatever Friday. So it's just even the way it's like being laid out, it's 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 funny to me, man. And I, you know, I look at all that stuff, man. But you touched on something. I got two, I guess, two more things I want to bring up to you. Um, but the one you just touched on it um, talked about like the format, the playoff format. What are your thoughts on the format? There's been a lot of criticism on like you know teams like the Dodgers, teams like the Braves losing out due to the fact that it's a best of five series. I know you're a fan of best of five series in the playoffs. We've talked about that in past episodes in regards to like the NBA, you know, how they used to have the best of five series, how that's gone, you know, but this at first was the best of three, you know, against the Cardinals. 
And again, Cardinals had all three home games. I kind of like that, but you know, that that next round is the best of five. Then obviously it goes to best of seven, best of seven. But what are your thoughts on the new format? I uh, I tell you what, I almost near love it. The only thing I would say, because I did not like the extra wild card, but you have a play in game. I don't like that's not a playoff to me for base. Like it's you have to have a series. So one game, like I'm glad yeah. the Phillies didn't have that where it's like, all right, you had a play in. I didn't like the play in game. Hell, I don't like the play in game for March Madness. So yeah, I'm not gonna I don't like, like it for it the, I'm not gonna like it for baseball playoffs. So I'll be honest, that made me be like, what's the point of this extra wild card then if you 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 gotta do a not even a series, a play-in game. I like that the first round now, like, that's a series. Best two out of three. The only thing I would say is, and I know that they're trying to get the, – they're playing these back-to-back, boom, boom, boom. If that team with the lower seed, if they get the first game and the next two potential are at the higher seed, so, like, you're kind of getting, like, oh, that the higher seed does have to go on the road a little bit. You get one game on the road. And then, all right, then the next two potentially are at your spot to kind of mix it up. And yeah, I know it's people, a big advantage, those three right, games at home. Right, so that's the only thing I would say I want. I know people must say logistics where you got to fly out. It's the I'm travel, like, yeah. You can set it up, though, because then to me, from the best of five on, then you can do these back-to-back boom, boom, boom games. But then if you give a day off for travel, but then like the next potential two games are at the higher seed, I think it's cool. I think, guess what? Like, you have to learn how to adjust to that, where people, people, I think, are locked in, like, the top two seeds, especially in the NL, had a bye, and then, oh, these other teams were playing, so they weren't ready. It's like, that's on you, bro. You got to get ready. I, I don't get it. Like, you got to be ready for it. You should have the advantage. You were rested. Right. Your aces. Are you starters? You have bullpen them, is lined up. Yep. It should be good to go. The other teams are having to maneuver and be like, all right, well, we used him. We got to do this and that. You should be good to go. Um, both teams, I feel like when it comes to the NL, the top two seeds, now they had long – well, the Dodgers were coasting. The Braves had a good fight to get over yeah. the Mets, and they win that division. Um, they were coasting. I, I don't speak for players. I don't know what's in their minds. They were flat. And I don't know if it was overconfidence or just shell shocked. The Dodgers and Braves were flat in the LDS. They just, it was not even close in either series. And to me, it's like if you change up the format, would it be close? I don't think so. I think the Braves, especially, they still lose. The Dodgers yeah. still lose. So I, I love the format. I People were complaining and trying to like justify that's why the Phillies are doing it or that's why this team is doing it. Um, I think that's bullshit. I think, honestly, besides giving that first-round team all th- three potential home games, I think it's a great format for the future. I love the format, too. I do. And, again, I agree the disadvantage of no no home games that first round, you want to call it, that play-in series. But still, like, I think if you're the lower seed, you should be at a disadvantage if you're just squeaking in with that wild card. I also think – that best of five series, yeah, it's tough. And we always talk about it there. I mean, you lose that one game, that's a lot of pressure. And then the thing is, with a team like the Phillies, you know, you got that one-two punch in Wheeler, who I want to talk about too, um, and Nola. You never know what can happen those two games. And you can lose those two games, and you're pretty much done, you know. So I, I do like that. Also, the Padres and Dodgers, that's a division series you know what I mean like they played all year Padres played the Dodgers tough this year same with the Phillies Phillies played the Braves pretty tough this year those teams know each other so well mm-hmm. that's where the like the that's where the disadvantage was at for those top seeds it was just like you're playing teams in your division they know what you're about and they don't and, fear you right and they play you well so that's that um but no I'm with you I love the I love the format and that was said for both teams, but I'll keep it just to Philly. After Philly beat St. Louis, and like you said, Harper hit and bomb, but the rest of the guys didn't hit. Everyone said that will change because they know the Braves, they know these pitchers. And when I heard that, I was like, "Yeah, you're right. Like that will change because 
it's that fear. But that's not just that's any sport when you have a division, right? Right. You lose that fear because a it's a rivalry, but also you're seeing them more than other teams. You know them; they know you. So it's just like, all right, who's ready to go right now? The Braves weren't ready. That that's just what it is, man. Like, um, there's no stop making excuses for these seeds. Like they they weren't ready for it. They weren't. No, nah, and again, if you – I think baseball is like – I think it's all about the bullpen. Like if you have a dominant bullpen, if your starter can give you five innings, you should be good to go. I, that's, that was the San Francisco, like those giant teams we were talking about in 2010 and all that. That was their formula. You know, just get us a couple innings. You know, Lincecum, get us get – us, well, Lincecum was great. But, you know, get us there. We'll we'll handle the rest, you know, and timely hitting, obviously. But, you know – um, this this playoff, all the play, not all the playoff series, but they've been just really really fun to watch. Another thing I wanted to bring up, you talked about Zach Wheeler. Um, I wanted to touch on him a little bit. Then I have one more question for you. Um, so Zach Wheeler has been. You talked about that first game in St. Louis. That's been only his only little blip. This playoff run, everybody's focusing on Harper, and rightfully so. Harper has been obviously amazing. It's my favorite player probably right now in the, in the game. But Zach Wheeler has been very, very, very good in this playoff run. You know, he's beaten some really good pitchers. He's been he's played against some great teams. It's been lights out, man. Lights out, lights out, lights out. What are your thoughts on Zach Wheeler and where this playoff run potentially is going to put him in, in that, like, category of, like, top pitchers in the league? I think he's kind of there. You know, he had a, a run at the Cy Young, you know, a couple right. of years ago. So I think he was he was there. I, I'll be honest. In my opinion, the team wasn't nope. with him, right? And I right. feel like that's kind of what hurt him when, in his time in Philly. You know, was he, he didn't have that support. But if you looked at his numbers and what he was doing, it's like, oh, he's pitching some of the best ball in the the National League. Right. But he it was kind of yeah, yeah. It kind of wasn't talked about these past few years because the team was just struggling. Mm-hmm. And that can really hurt somebody. And and sometimes as fans and the media will look past that and being like, all right, they, this person's put up great numbers. Their win-loss maybe isn't the best, best, but look what they're doing. Um, and sometimes we don't. But I feel like Wheeler is emerging. I, I, you know, I think a great playoff run, it can do one of two things for you. It sets you up for that confidence of being like, you're, yeah, I'm here. And I'm one of the best players in the game, or we've seen it where people they kind of burn out. They give it all for that run, and then the yeah. next year, the hangover effect. They're tired. So Wheeler to me, and I'll even put Nola in this case because I feel like they both are ace. Wheeler is an ace, and Nola kind of has been an ace. They yeah. both have ace. You, you you can have two aces. I'm scared for both of them after this run because I could see them taking off and being like. This is a one-two punch for the future, or I can see them having a hangover effect, and they laid it all out here for the playoffs. And then I think that they're going to be bad necessarily, but we're going to be like kind of like with Cole Hamels after the 08 season. It's like what's up with Cole? It's like what's up with Wheeler? What's up with Nola? They're not they're not on. So I'm not going to be prisoner of the moment and be like now they've arrived. They haven't shown me enough to be like. Yeah, they're, Zach Wheel is the best pitcher in the NL. He's the best pitcher in the game. I need a little bit more from him. But this, to me, is the setup that can get him there to being like yeah, the best pitcher in National League, the guy who should start the All-Star game next year, mm-hmm. Zach Wheeler. Right, and I'm not concerned with Wheeler, and I'm going to tell you why. If if he doesn't have that – he didn't have the time. He was hurt. But, you know, he, he was hurt, and the Phillies brought him back very slowly. And we talked about September, how much they struggled. Big part of that, there was no Zach Wheeler. You know what I'm saying? Like, so he missed a lot of games. And, again, like, they worked him in really slow. It was They could have probably brought him back a week or two before they did, and they didn't. And I think it's really paying off now. He's fresh. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's fresh on this run. He's pitched less innings than he pitched last year, you know, because of him being hurt. And um, so that – negative turned out to me in my opinion has been a big time positive and that's why for me it's like frustrating watching him get pulled in like the seventh eighth inning with like 80 pitches and stuff dominating but they trust those two guys in the back end so i get but that i i just kind of wonder where is he 
going to be at kind of like, is he the guy? Is he like this, like going to emerge? He has potential to be like, yeah, that's the best pitcher in the national league. And so I, I think he will. I mean, I think he's already there. I just think a lot of people are not seeing it. And I think they're seeing it now in this playoff run. I think he's been up there. And I, I wouldn't say I would call him the best. Oh, uh, he's not. I don't call him the best either, but uh, yeah. But he's I, there. I think he's showing he has that capability. Right. Which I don't think people, and even those like yourself, I don't want to speak for you, before this playoff run of your life, he's the best pitcher in the NL. I don't think people were, even if you're like the biggest Wheeler fan, it wasn't like, I'm not going to say the best. He's got potential. Yeah. But I'm not saying the best. He's showing now he can be the number one dog. Yeah. You know, Verlander and Houston is like, yes, top dog. Yeah. It's, I'm not going to say Verlander's a future Hall of Famer. I'm not saying yeah. Wheeler's Verlander. Like, no doubt. But Wheeler has shown potential where I'm like, oh, you can be the top pitcher in the National League if you, if everything, you know, I know injuries aside, you have the stuff to be the best pitcher. Like, we could say we had the number one pitcher in the game right. on the Phillies. Like, um, that's – Beyond huge, I'm trying to think. The last time I felt that way when Schilling Kurt was Schilling, here, yeah, in those yeah. bad years, it was like, yeah, Schilling's the best. He's a bad team, but he's the best pitcher in the NL. You don't really have that a lot. So this is a great run, but it's putting high expectations, at least for me, for Wheeler for next year. Where right. I'm like, all yeah, right, I want to see you bring it. Right now, this has got to continue to the whole season. Like you can't have no. Like, you got to be the guy, and you hear it in baseball all the time, like the stopper, right? Like that streak stopper where if you're losing a couple games, oh, Wheeler's up tomorrow. We should – this should be stopped. This losing streak should be stopped. And this yeah. is where – you know what I'm saying? Like, this is where – I feel like he's been there. It just hasn't been consistent throughout the whole year. And um, I think now this – hopefully, like you said, this can turn out two ways. He can take this run and whatever happens in the World Series happens. He still has a really good run in this playoff you know, he's had a good playoff run, what I mean. And um, he can take this as a momentum, like a springboard to a Cy Young or whatever the case may be next year. Or, you know, he can take it and be feeling himself and think he's the shit and, and show up. And I, not, you know, I can not, say not, not for happy. me, for me, I haven't felt every fifth day is when, now you know, no one goes undefeated, but a true ace, every right. fifth day you expect yeah, to win. Yeah, that's a win, yep. Every fifth day with Wheeler, I'm hopeful. Even these bad Girardi, I, I'm optimistic. Okay, but I'm not like win day. I'm like, yeah, okay, I'm maybe. You. I'm with you. I'm like, we might get it. Okay, like so, I want to feel like win day. I haven't gotten that yet from Wheeler. Right, I'm not there yet either. But he's he's getting me there. He's, he's nudging me for sure. Um, I, it's a, no excuse now. Honestly, right. seeing this, there's no excuse. Like you're right. doing it against some. Some great offenses, some great lineups. I mean, he's making some guys look dumb. He uh, made Machado look really bad, and Soto, like, Soto and looks, Soto. Man, Soto look. They look bad. confused. Right now, the Soto hit that got that shot on him, but in the last game, but Soto eventually is going to get his. So, but there, I mean, my last point here. I don't know if you have anything else, but you mentioned a name that I'm kind of missing in these playoffs. But you said Joe Buck. I miss Joe Buck. I like Joe Buck a lot. Mm -hmm. I know people hate him, especially Philly, people in Philly hate him for like the football stuff, but I, I really like Joe Buck. Um, I wanted to ask you, because I was having this conversation with a friend of mine. We were watching the game yesterday. I, I'm i really enjoying John Smokes, like a whole lot. Like he's given a really good perspective when it comes from like a pitcher. And, you know, I, I can't remember exactly what he was talking about, but oh, he was talking, it was a mound visit in game four. Five, game four. Sorry, game four. Padres pitching coach came out. Socks. I can't. It was the dude with the long hair that got rocked. Um, mm -hmm. And he was saying like, you know, it was. I think it was um, Schwarber. I was up to bat, and I'm paraphrasing obviously, but he was just saying like, you know, you don't go out there and tell this guy, look, you do not throw like a curveball to this guy, or whatever. Like, you don't put a negative thought in the pitcher's mind because again, like the, his mindset going to this you know, facing this guy is going to be a negative mindset. And I've really never thought about that, right? Because I, I, I used to catch for a long time. And I would say sometimes, like, dude, don't throw this dude a fastball. He's going to – he might hit it, you know. So I think he's been great. 
I think Joe Davis, I think this is his name, Joe, the pretty dude, Joe Davis. Um, I think he's been he's been really good. I just wanted to get your thoughts on that. I, I just because again, it's it's a it's a tandem that I haven't really listened to a whole lot throughout the year. Uh, just because again, I haven't watched a lot of baseball like that. But no, um, I think they've been great. I think the FS1 crew, like the 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 the, the whole pregame crew with, with as annoying as he is, A Rod, I think he's really good at it. I can't stand A Rod. You lost me there. I can't stand No, nah, I, I don't I think he's like that whole uh what's that? K Rod, him Michael K, that's brutal. That's but brutal. I think him with Big Poppy and that's Frank no Thomas, man. I like the mix. I really do. I do it's all guys, all great players, all guys who give that perspective of what it's like, all guys who have kind of been in the playoffs. Been, they've all been the man on their team. They know that pressure. So I, I like the pregame with them. Um, the TBS, real quick, so I know uh, TBS with Costas and Pedro and Curtis yeah. Granderson and J-Roll, they're really good too, honestly. It's a little bit different, but Pedro's good. I like Pedro. I love Pedro, yeah. So um, I can say John Smoltz. It's really hard because I loved – the Joe Buck McCarver lineup. Yeah, that's and an McCarver rate. gave you insight, but he also just gave you commentary on if he thinks this guy blew it. And a lot or, of feelings, yeah. Yeah, he gave you the emotion that you were yeah. like, oh, Tim McCarver's throwing some shots here. So it's like, whether you agree or disagree, I like that. John Smoltz doesn't do that. Now, when you had Joe Buck with John Smoltz, loved it. Because John yeah. Smoltz is different, but I like that you he gives a great perspective and he's kind of like teaching you he's not the most emotion but yeah. he's kind of breaking it down and like you said he's made great points as a pitcher and then a great job of talking about in the regular season you might do this but now you don't do this here and that's been really good because he also has the insight of being a great starting pitcher and then the insight and a, of being a great closer re, yeah great reliever so and then and then having that mindset for both of those in playoff spots, in big games, I think I think he's been great. You know, and I'm, to, I'm really people need him. to realize what you said, and people may think it's pitching. It's completely different jobs and completely yeah. different mindsets to be a starting pitcher and to be a bullpen guy and then to be the closer. That's all very different mindsets. I mean, and that's why it was great to hear him talk about Ranger Suarez. Yep. and I don't know about this, and he was right, and it, it worked out, and. Rob Thompson said Rangers, and I honestly it's like I knew that, but in the moment I forgot. I'm just thinking of him as the starter, so I, I was like, "Oh yeah, he did close in the past." Yeah, he's a bullpen guy. Yeah, but I was just thinking like, Ugh, "What are you doing, man?" And then the yeah. weather, it was rainy, so Smoltz was good with that. I think he needs a better lead guy. Yeah, no, I I'm with you. I just think Joe Davis caught like some of those home run calls. He's been he's been good. And I'm not saying he's he, been great. He nailed the Harper call. Yeah, he did. He that's one thing I'll give him, no matter what. He hasn't been bad. I just think like Joe Buck was a better oh, yeah. setup guy and he was pretty entertaining himself, in my opinion. So that helped the dryness of Smoltz. And it kind of also Joe Buck to me in the past got Smoltz to like lighten up a little bit and be yeah. loose. Fox has been terrible. I don't knock Ken Rosenthal or Verducci, but like the sideline after a big hit is terrible. the worst. Terrible. The worst. I hate it with a passion. I hate it too. I think a lot of people hate it. It's like you take like Harper hit that home run. And he's sitting there having a conversation, and all you see over his shoulder is Ken Rosenthal hovering over him, like trying to get this interview. And he's like, like he literally had to turn his back on him so that way he doesn't come over. It's it's terrible. I hate it too. I don't know what they're doing there. You know, I don't know if they're trying to be like. Like, you know, you interview coaches coming off the field or whatever. Like, hockey does it too. They interview coaches, you know, during the game. It's – I hate it, but it's – I'm with you. I hate it too. And, and I don't not – you know, they, they have a job. that They're being asked to do right. it, whatever. Right. So, I'm not knocking on the guys actually interviewing. To me, at most, if you want to do seventh inning stretch, you interview the manager. Yep. I'm cool with that. Seventh inning stretch, I'm going to talk to the skipper about it. Right or pregame, and then seventh inning stretch. That's it. Other than that, I don't want that. Uh, why are you talking? They have a big hit. The game's still good. Like, like it's not like the game's over. They did it in every series, 
like they, you know, the Brave series. I'm like, yeah, we're up, but the game's not over yet. Why, you, yeah, like we still got a game to play here. Like, and they, that's I mean, the I, thing with Fox. I guess they're trying to like promote baseball and get to know these guys better. I, I don't know. I just, I don't like it. I think it's terrible. There are way better ways to do that. Yeah. Like they need to do that. This isn't it. Like, like I agree. Like, yeah, you got to promote the stars better in this game because I feel like that's because they're in San Diego. There's a lot of stars over there that people didn't realize and didn't yeah. talk about that. They was star heavy. Um, so I feel like you got to do it, but this just isn't the way it's, it's not, not, um, uh, I meant to, I agree. I guess one thing I got to say, people have said this, but we saw Reese Hoskins do it over the weekend with the, the it wasn't as emphatic as the Brave series, but the bat slam. There's some people, even Philly people, fans, who are like, we love it, but if I was the other team, I'd remember that for next year. Do you feel that way? Do you feel like, I guess twofold, A, do you feel Reese Hoskins was disrespectful? And B, how do you feel about those old unwritten rules of baseball? I love it. You know, I absolutely love it. It brings a lot of energy. You see the dudes jumping out of the dugout. You know, I... I love and baseball needs this. You know what I'm saying? Like this is where, and we've talked about this in, our, in other shows. This is where the shift has to come in baseball. And if you want to make this game more popular, you allow these guys to do this. Now, if these players want to handle situations on their own, that's on them. You know what I'm saying? Like they can do that, but I don't think it's disrespectful. You know, I just think it's in the moment. You know, yeah, was it extra? I think so. Like you know what I'm saying? Like you normally don't do that, but the guy struggling came up with a big shot he was excited fans went crazy but there's both teams doing it you know what I mean it's not like it's just one team doing it or just one organization that's doing it you know I'll, I'll give you another example Juan Soto hits a finally hits a home run in the series and he's walking around the bases like you know this is like his ninth home run in the series like you know mm -hmm. and it's like I think that's worse than what Reese Hoskins and other players are doing you know what I'm saying like so I think I think also teams are doing it more at home. I could be wrong, but I think it's more of like a home field thing. But I, I love it, dude. Like I, I it just brings a different energy and it, it's just something baseball needs. I don't know if I don't know how you feel. I that's I love it. I, I'll I'll like I say, connect it for everyone. When I grew up and you know, used to have the VHSs or doing a Phillies rain delay, they would always show old clips of stuff. And I'll go back to 1980, and I can go back to the LCS against Houston. And, and also, their clinching division thing against Montreal. Those are down-to-the-wire games, and it, everything's on the line. And when a big run would come in, either a home run or someone, they brought a run in, the whole dugout empties, and everyone's high-fiving. And me and my brother were kids, and we were like, is that what baseball used to, they used to do that back then? Like, why don't they do that now? Like, that's what you need now. We did not know that the 1980 Phillies were different back then. Teams yeah. didn't do that back then. They were just being hyped. And it's like, yo, that was dope. You need that more. And I've loved seeing it with a big hit, and they're hopping over the dugout, and everyone's coming out. Like, that's what you need, man. Or, like, or when they're walking in the dugout, it's one handshake, another handshake, a different handshake, a different oh, handshake. Man. I love it, dude. Like, that's so awesome, man. Like, that that. You know, he's not with the uh, – he's the one guy I wish was still here, Andrew McCutcheon. Like, I wish he was still a part of this team. Like, yeah. I'm missing him. But that's what made me love him was yeah. he's in Pittsburgh and everybody has a different handshake. And I find, like, it's cool. It's personality. We talked about it on uh, the Jeter episodes with those Red Sox teams. We're not Boston guys. We both love those teams, A, because of the Hispanic flavor, and it was different that way. But B, they just brought personality. They it just brought fun. fun to the game. I wanted to watch these guys for the home, the hits they were getting, but the personalities they were bringing to the game. I could watch. They could be playing the Orioles in last place. I'm going to watch them. That's what you need to kind of have excitement here. And so I, I think Reese was all right. Like you said, he was struggling. But they, I mean, people talked about that bat flip for a long time and i was like ain't that big of a deal to me man but yeah. they were like the bat flip the bat flip the bat flip and i'm like now he did it the other night i'm like is this like your little trademark thing here bro are you trying to like 
Yeah. Because they hyped it up so much. I don't know. I was happy he hit them two homers, but I'm like, uh, all right. Um, yeah, no, it's – I love it. I, I, I Now, the Padres were doing, like, the Polaroid pictures in the dugout after big hit. Whatever. Like, that's whatever. And, and the thing is, I don't even – like, you talk about Soto trotting. I don't even think it's disrespectful. I think it's just dumb. It was dumb on in that moment because – Right, because, like – and you're losing, like, in the overall series, like, you're down. So that's why – but I I wouldn't be offended if I'm on the other team. No, no. Like, I don't but, care. But on the flip side of that there, I mean, when Harper hit that home run, he had a, he did the same exact trout. He did the same exact thing that Soto did at third. Soto does this, like, little pause. And, like, mm-hmm. Soto's, like, corking stuff, which I – it's cool. Like, I appreciate that. But I, that showed me – Players see that stuff, and they're going to remember just some of this stuff for sure. And that's cool. I think that's fine to remember. Right. I think then trying to beam somebody because they did it is like, yeah. Don't get me wrong. I love a good baseball brawl like the next guy, but it's still like, like over these, dumb stuff. Sometimes. These dudes are throwing ninety eight now. Like, yeah, you beam somebody, you can kill somebody. Oh yeah, that's why. There's never. If I'm a hitter, every time I get hit, there's no – unless the pitcher better be – and that's what I get on pitchers about. If you didn't mean it, immediately say, my bad, my bad, my bad. But you just do it and you're staring, I, I'm going to be thinking you did it on purpose every time. Yeah. I have to because also you're a big league pitcher. You know where to place it. <laughs> you know where to put it. Like you have that talent. You didn't made it up here. So unless you can say – because you don't see pitcher people are like, oh, I didn't mean it. I'm like – well, his reaction didn't say my bad. He just kind of stared him down. Yeah. What you supposed to think? Like, like uh, you know, if you don't mean it, say like, "Hey, my fault, man." I didn't, you know. Because you'll see pitchers do that. You know, they will do that. So. Yeah. Um, I guess the right way to close this out is. Oof. There's there's been a song. Oh, that okay. I thought you asked for prediction. Go ahead. No, no, because we kind of. I mean. We we've kind of put it out there, like we it, we're going along for the ride, and we would thank Houston, but we don't know. And uh, I just hate this long break. I think the long break. I like the every day playing because guys if guys get hot, they continue to play. I'm a little opposite. I well, I think yes, yeah, Sunday, but then you never knew because obviously both series wrapped up early. Right. If they would have gone seven, we would have needed it, like six or seven, but. Stroh's sweep, and then we went in five. So it's like, who would have predicted both championship series in quick? Yeah. Um, but I do – I like it that we get a chance to bask in this a little bit because – True. I don't – that feeling on Sunday, I've had it a few times. I know you've had it too, but it's the first time in a while I did not go to Frankfurt and co- – I didn't go out. I stayed home Yeah. because I was like, I'm a little tired, and I'm like, you know, let let the young people have it, but – there's moments where I was watching on social media and I'm like, should I be down there just to like be a part? Cause it was like, well, if they win the world series, I'll go with you. We all right. Yeah. Out. We're out. We're out. But, yeah. um, so I asked that that's a bet. Everybody heard it here. Jose's yeah, we'll, coming we'll out. take, we'll take pictures. We'll post yeah. We'll have it. We'll do live, uh, live yeah. video from it. If yeah. they win, you have our word, but certain teams have songs in all sports that they either they get made up or, People, you know, they had attached to a song, whatever. This, how do you feel about dancing on my own? I'll be very, very honest with you, Jeremy Dove. I never heard the song until this <laughs> playoff run. Honestly, I don't know who yeah. sings it. I heard it a couple times. I, I thought about playing it on Spotify when I was working today. I was reviewing a bunch of stuff. I was like, let me play, let me learn this song in case, like, this, whatever, man. I don't know. Like, it's a nice song. I'll say that it's working for them. They love it. The crowd goes crazy. The whole crowd sings this thing. I, I'm just missing out, I guess. Cause I, again, I never heard this song before, but it, it's really weird because they're winning. So that's why like, I like, cause it means like they've, they've won, especially like they're playing it when they clinch the series and like, they're celebrating in the locker room. So then it like, you can't help but have a good feeling because, like, the, they're pouring champagne and your team won. It's a weird song. I barely – I did hear it before this. I'm not going to say I hear it all the time before. But I was kind of like when they clenched it in Houston to get into the playoff and I'm they're singing this, and I was like, 
this is a weird this is a weird one for me. And I'm like, why are you singing this? Yeah. I don't and the know. message is kind of like, I kind of get it in a way, like what the song represents and how it applies to the team. But I'll be honest, I'm not going to lie to you. And this may not go over well, but I'm, I'm going to try to say it the right way. When I say I miss like Kutch, like McCutcheon is not here. I like this team, but there is like, a, I don't feel like I'm associated. I'm not like, oh, yeah. yeah. Like there's like a disconnect a little bit too, where like, I like the team and like, but like, I'm not like, oh, these are my dudes either. Like it's, it's a weird thing. Some of them can maybe grow weird. into it, yeah. but I, I feel like I don't, I don't. And with, if that song reminds me of that where I'm like, there's a disconnect here. Like. I'm not really vibing with this one. Well, like, obviously, they're winning. I never heard the song, so it's definitely a disconnect there. Thank God. I'll say this. Thank God for Jose Alvarado, Sir Anthony Dominguez, um, Gene. Ran- Rangers, Ranger Suarez. Like, thank God, Sosa. Thank God for these guys because I would definitely feel a big-time disconnect with this team. But yeah, I do like Harper. I feel like Harper is a dude like, I've hung. I can hang out with. You know what I mean. Like a bunch of these Harper guys. now. I think. Well, I think Harper now. I, and I and I think that's something I, I was. I forgot to bring up. I think with the maturity and hopefully he's someone who could be a weird thing. And I I know baseball people can play longer. I think this can. He tur- just turned thirty. This could spur him to having. He could be a better player in his thirties than he was in his twenties. And and the Phillies are lucky that the TH what's put in the national league this year. If it wasn't, he's not even playing. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Like, and they're, they're not in the playoffs number one, but he's not even playing. If they are in the playoffs, think about that, man. Like how all this stuff, like kind of just working in their favor, man. Like I, I forgot about that. And I was like, man, like I was watching the game, this last game on Sunday. And I was like, Phew. Thank God they made that switch, man. Cause who knows what would have been going on right now. Absolutely. Absolutely. Great point. Great point. Um, but it's a weird thing. It's the song. Now I went to the LA fit. I went to the gym yesterday. Oh, it's all over. Yeah. And they're, they're playing it. Uh, I was at uh, target the other day. I heard them playing it is on the radio all the time. And it's an anthem. And I totally get why, but I'm just like this song. Don't have it. This <laughs> song. It's just like, uh, it's, not, it's not dreams and nightmares for sure. No, which is totally different. Yeah. Totally different, and I connected with that song. I knew it way before. It was old. It wasn't like a new song. It was old yeah, when no, yeah, it was old. the Eagles picked it, but it was still like all right. Like, and it felt the build up to it. Where this one is like, I don't know. It, it's a different. I'm hoping this squad can be around for a little while, and hopefully they keep winning, and I can grow. I'm gonna remember them forever. Yeah, but um, it's a team. I mean, Alec Baum said he hated it here. Back in the summer, you know, like he hates it here. Um, Alec Baum got defensive in the Cardinals series where people say, I can't play defense. And it's like, bro, you you couldn't play defense. You struggle on defense. Like, right. that wasn't Philly fans picking on you. You struggled, bro. Like, like but it, even, you know. even him making that comment and everybody reading his lips, he's made that comment on the field. If you don't, if you're not familiar with it, look up Alec Baum. Like, and he, I hate it here. The next game, Obviously, this is a home game because he was getting booed the game before. He gets a standing ovation when going to, like going to the plate. Because again, I think we talk about it a lot there. I mean, like there's a difference from passionate fans to like stupid fans. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. I, and I don't even like saying it like that. But you know, no, you this can, is right, right. Like you can go and just want to boo somebody if they make an error and just constantly boo them. Like that's the one thing with Philly. I I just I don't agree with, but. They are some smart. We're our smart, our smart fan base, and we understand. Like this dude was the third pick overall. Was it like sixty years ago? Or whatever. Like he's an important part of this team. Not for now, plus the future. You know what I'm saying? Like not only for now, plus the future. And we need him to have that confidence. He comes up the next day, first plate appearance, gets a standing ovation. He did what Ben Simmons couldn't do. Now, I always find a way to find Ben Simmons in this convers- any type of conversation, but he did what he Ben Simmons couldn't do, and it's like take that criticism and use that and make himself better. There were reports of him just working out on third base over day after day after day after practice. And it's like, 
that's what you should do when you get criticized for sure. in a booth like that. You know, so I give him credit. And one thing, I, I, I real quick, Jeremy, one thing you talked about the post game show with like A Rod and and uh, Big Poppy, and in particular Frank Thomas. They interviewed Bone after I don't know what game it was, but they interviewed. But he interviewed Bone. He was like, look, he was like, when I was a young player, I made a big time error. I think I think Bone got the game winning hit. I, I, think, I don't know if it was against St. Louis. I think it might have been St. Mm-hmm. Louis because he he had a good series there. And he was like, "Look, kid, don't worry about that. Just keep doing what you're doing." And I was like, "Man, imagine Alec Bone hearing that from Frank Thomas. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude, it happens to all of us. Just I love, I appreciate what you're doing. You're going to be a great player. Just keep doing what you're doing." I was like, Ugh, "That's awesome. Like, I, I like to see that's that." That's huge, and that's why for people watching, we did a podcast episode on Frank Thomas. We also did our first YouTube video with Jack Silverstein about Frank Thomas. So, yeah. you know, that's a good little plug for Frank's yeah. the man. And here while we talk about the player, Frank, and why he's the man on those two things. So look for that as well. But for sure. um, I like the Ben Simmons comparison because and that's my thing was just like to say you did struggle defensively. Like oh, they yeah. weren't picking, people weren't picking on. It wasn't like he made one rare error and people like, it's like, no, nah, you struggled there. You you did have struggles. And even like for our local post game, they were like, no, you struggled. Like, what are you talking about? <laughs> like, yeah. you, it wasn't like, I don't know why they're saying he kind of had that. And I'm like, because you were struggling. You were messing up over there. That's why we were saying it. He, he messed up sometimes in the playoffs yeah. defensively too. Like, let's be real. But he's owning it, and I liked after they clinched the, the pennant on Sunday. And then, you know, John Clark, the local reporter, asked what he had to say to the Philly fans, and he said, I love it here. And he gave a little wink, and I'm like, that's pretty good gets bringing it. it full circle. He gets it. And I think bringing this team, it full circle. I think this team gets it. You know what I mean? Like, this this team, Harper absolutely gets it. I think Schwarber gets the city. I think Bohm gets the city. I think Castellanos, even though he struggles sometimes, I think he gets it here. You know what I'm saying? Like I think, I think Gene Segura gets it. Like you know what I'm saying? Like I think the, I think the manager gets it. I just think Reese, Reese Hopkins gets it. You know he gets emotional because again, like he was on this Phillies team, him and Nola when the Phillies were terrible, when they were high, when they were you know not high draft picks, but they were draft picks and they were coming up, and they were playing and the Phillies were terrible. You know and. They were there and they played and now look where they're at. And I I just think, you know, when you make a run like this, it's awesome. It's always awesome. But when you can connect with the fan base, the way these guys are doing it, it just elevates it even more. And then when you get a fan base who's been hungry, who had that playoff runs that we were talking about from 07 to 2011, and we were missing that. I know I was, and I know you were there, me. And when we finally get that again, it's a recipe for something special. And I, I think that's where we're watching right now. So I, I think um, I, I'll be honest, man. I know I'm going to let people in on this, right? So Jose and I have been doing this for a few years. There's, you know, we create content through audio. Now we're doing video and everyone has their own way. And people have critiqued our way. You know, you got to do this, your topic, you're too long. So there's standards, right? And we've said, fuck them. We do it our way. But sometimes you do keep in mind, all right, for the people, maybe this is the bias in me. I don't care. I could talk this team all day. I'm not going to keep it for five hours, but yeah, I, I, I it, it's something. Um, this is special. And the thing is, you get older, you get more responsibilities. I'll be honest. You see sports changing some ways good, but some ways bad. You see the other, the ugly side of sports, whether you're looking in the past tense or you're looking in the present or the future, and you see how sports is changing in ways you don't like. And doing this show, you try to keep it professional or lit on it because we're trying to talk about it. This past month, I felt like I was 13 again watching this team. Yes. Yes, great point. And it's a great feeling to have. And it's those things where you hear, like you said, this the stupid fans versus the passionate. Uh, this guy's getting paid too much money or a, a bad scandal. Um, and it really harpens down on the sports. And, you, we're, you know, we're, it's almost sometimes feeling like sports is like news where, like, you're just hearing the negatives instead of the positives sometimes. 
But this past month, and maybe that's why I'm kind of glad the World Series is there's a little bit of a gap because I don't – Friday, we got to get back into game mode. Like, yeah. we're watching the game and, like, uh-oh, we're critiquing. But from Sunday to all this week, I'm just living in a high, and it's carrying over to work. Yeah. You know, work – I had a tough day, but it's like I really – it wasn't that bad. The Phillies won, man. It's like the Phillies are great. It's like, oh, man, I'm staying up late. I'm tired of this mess, but I got to watch this team. All right. Like, it's like, man – People are asking, we're going to go out, and people who aren't sports fans, you want to go out and do things? Nah, man, I got to watch this game. I got to watch this game. You know, girls or people who try to talk to, I called you. I'm watching the Phillies clinch, man. Like, yeah. I'm going to get you tomorrow. Like, yeah. all those things go out the window. This has felt like a kid again, and it's been special. And I love this show. I love talking sports history, the past and the present. The present, Jeremy, needed this so bad. And yeah. I'm grateful for it. So am I. I. I'm with you. And I think I think baseball does that. I think baseball takes us back and always like – like for me, it's like when I think of baseball, I think of when I was a kid, right? Like, you know, a kid, teenagers, like some of the most funnest moments in my life were playing ball, like playing baseball. And I, I, I played it all, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, my closest friends, we were all on the same team. Like we have those memories. We always talk junk to each other, you know. Um, I, I'll give you a quick story, right? Um, one of my best friends, shout out to my man Edwin Rodriguez, right? Um, you know his his mom passed away, right? And I don't, he's not going to get upset. I'm telling the story, but it, you know, that happened a huge tragedy in his life, right? Obviously, and we all fell from. We love this dude, like you know, and still do, you know. And um, we had a game. The next week, I believe it was, he couldn't come because they were doing something, obviously, for that. Mm -hmm. So we all got together. We were like, look, we're going to dedicate this game for him. You know what I'm saying? Like, we beat this team like 22 to nothing. <laughs> like, we were good. Like, I, I'm not even – I'm going to talk shit. We were really good. Yeah. We come back. We signed. We all signed the ball. Come back to his house after he had to do what he did. We gave him the ball. We all hung out, had a good time. He still has that ball. You know what I'm saying? Like, and that was – 20 years ago maybe you know what i'm saying like maybe a little more than that and it's just for me like i go back to those memories and i, I you the way you just said that kind of i've been i've been feeling like that too it's just having put my like, finger on the pulse and and i agree it's, it's baseball that's what baseball does to me like i love football i love hockey obviously basketball but baseball brings me always brings me back to my childhood and watching this front it's been like extra emotional extra i'm extra excited because again, I'm I'm 13 again. No, um, I'll be honest. For those who aren't local, Michael Barkan is that host of Eagles post game live, Phillies pre. If there's a big event, the yeah. pre game or the post game, he's the host of, and he's been that way since I can remember. Right, he does a great job. And he does a great job. Um, and I got to I met him a few. He's really cool too. Uh, at Cheesecake Factory, random, but uh, he was there. He was <laughs> it's a great like, spot. Yeah, Michael Barkan. He's like, hey, he's cool. But um, he said something, and that's what made it hit, was he was hosting it, and he was like, you know, I forget which round. It wasn't the LCS. I don't believe. I think it might have been the LD. But he was like, um, last time the Phillies were here was 2011. And he looked at the other guys on the set, and he was like, he pointed to one, you know, Ruben. He's like, your dad was here last time. He's no longer here. He's like, my mom, my mother-in-law were here. And he's like, a lot of people. It made me think, like, the core of the people who brought me up, who even, like, my grandma loved one sport that we could watch. It was baseball. My grandpa, who would – that was the bait sport we talked about first, and he knew the history, and he talked about the Negro Leagues with me. Um, they're no, they were here the last time the Phillies were in the playoffs um, and in the World Series. They're no longer here. And there's a few other people who – for sports, but even for baseball, especially, they were the foundation. Yep. And the last time this run was going on, they were around. They were older, but they were around. We could talk about it. And that hit me when he said it. It was late at night, but I was like, yeah, a lot of people here, some old, some young, who they're not around anymore to talk this. And hearing you tell that story, it, it brings it back like, Sports can do that, and it, it, it brings that sentimental. It's a connector, and it is sometimes – there's plenty of things. With my grandma, I didn't know what to say. I'll be straight up on this show. 
I yeah. know what to talk about. We, you know, we're years apart. We sat there and could watch a Phillies game on a Sunday afternoon and still not talk, but yet still know what we we didn't need to. We just, oh, yeah. uh, we gave a reaction. Oh, <laughs> you know, or oh, or like, what is this? But it's a few words, but then that's the best communication we had was on a Sunday afternoon watching the game. So um, it, it, it just does do that. And it's brought that feeling and, um, Part of me is nervous, honestly, because, you know, now you're hooked and you want them to win, but you're happy no matter what because it's been a great ride. But in part of me is like I want this week to extend a little bit because yeah. I don't want this feeling to go away. Right, and I think all sports, you know, you have all age groups and fans, right? I think baseball and our show, we pride ourselves. We connect the past to the present. That's, that's what we always talk about. I think baseball is the one sport where – that happens more than any other sport, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. you go to ball games, you go to you watch TV, you see a lot of like older, older people at the games, right? Because it's just it's the pastime, right? And it's their pastime. I don't think baseball is America's like pastime in our generation. I think that's football at that point. But in their in their generation, it is baseball, and it's like you get that generation watching these games and going to these games and getting excited. And you get this younger generation that has no idea what it was like in 95, 96, 97, 98. Like, I can just keep going how bad they were. They don't know that. They know this team right now. Then you got the other generation that was around for that Jimmy Rollins, Chase Utley, Ryan Howard, Cole Hamels run. That they they thought this was how it always was. And I used to tell them, like, this is, this is right. not how it was. Like, this is an amazing run. Please enjoy this. I know I did, you know. And – it's so many. I think baseball brings so many. Like a, it, it closes the generational gap because it's like everybody just is there for the love of the sport. I'm not saying football doesn't have it. I know hockey has it. I'm not saying basketball doesn't have it. I just think, in my opinion, I see it more in baseball, and I think that's why baseball to me is so beautiful. I think of the four sports that you just named. I think hockey's the closest, honestly. I do too. But I think baseball is number one. I've never. All right, for things that weren't, you know, people can, you know, were Philly guys. The times I felt emotional for a non-Philly game, 04 Red Sox, when they talked about 86 years, and Joe Buck made that 86, and I was sleeping. I had school. I've been high school. I was like, I got to be up for these final three outs because 86 years. I'm not connected to that, Jose. I'm not a Boston guy. Uh, I felt that. Yep. 86 years of waiting, Buckner's era, Bucky bleeping Dent, uh, all these different things that they battled and all that stuff. And it, you felt that go away. And then, man, you felt emo- seeing fans get emotional. I, I, you know, I had tears in my eyes watching them. So I knew when the Cubs won in 2016, I felt the same way. And it was like, man, it just brought tears. I'm not a Cub guy. I uh, at least I know a few people in Boston. I think I know like one person in Chicago. I don't even know people in Chicago. Yeah, I don't. I felt that though, and I understood it. And even I'll be honest, the Eagles winning those two teams made me understand what it would be like. I can say it's not the same though, because no. baseball just has that. It wasn't the same as the Cubs finally getting it, the Red Sox finally getting it. Um, it, it's a different thing, and. I mean, just you can go throughout baseball history. I mean, the way people talk about the 69 Mets. Yeah. You don't hear that in other sports, honestly, but that in the stack, because baseball is such a long year, the dog days of summer, and so much the ups, the downs that can happen, like the nostalgia that people have for when they finally broke through. I mean, the only thing I can think about in football has been like the Saints won the Super Bowl, but that's because they had a Hurricane Katrina. It's not the same kind of a thing. Yeah. It's like in basketball, I don't feel that with other teams. I mean, I'm happy when my team wins or other team, but it's it's very dynastic and it's not the same. But baseball, you have it, and those stories are special, and you just hear it. Um, and I, I honestly think what I'm feeling the Phillies right now, only like March Madness, when a team has a deep run in March Madness, kind of, you kind of get that vibe. It's not the same still, but that's the only no. thing I can compare it to. It's like 
it's just playoff baseball is just special and it's different when you're a part of it. Yeah, it's it's there's nothing like it, you know, and it's just like football is great because it's like one and done, right? Like I think hockey is very similar to playoff baseball because like you have to like if it's a like one goal game in hockey and it's like game seven, there's nothing better than a game seven in NHL, I don't think. Um because you have to be on top of every, you got to be, you can't turn away because you can miss this goal. Like, you know what I mean? Like I, that's, I think hockey has that. Like, but baseball is, whew, uh, it's different, man. Like it's, it's just totally different. I've missed it. I've needed it. I'm glad they're, you know, this team is doing this for me. Um, but this run here, man, I'm, I'm never going to forget it. That game five, I'm never going to forget that game ever. No, this, this is, um, this is this has been an October to remember, and and I think you're right. Like I'll just piggyback one more time. Like um, hockey, the fan base is a rabbit. Hockey's so fast that you just feel that tension. But like you say, you turn away, like you may miss something. But like the tension's there in a close playoff game in hockey. But with baseball, because there is the build up. Every pitch matters. Every yeah. mound huddle just feels like dramatic. I mean. I think the whole country has seen that Bryce Harper home run with like the money ball music playing with it. That got four and a half million views as of this morning. Monday, Tuesday, three, uh, two days in. Today's Tuesday. So shoot, two days in. I mean, it's just perfect. And then someone wrote, I think you saw on Twitter, they wrote when we commented on it, like, Four and a half million views, and this feels like this could win an Oscar. And I, I had to write that's because Moneyball is a great movie, but this is one of those things where real life is better than the script. Yeah, you know, um, in the Moneyball movie, the home runs after a regular season game to keep the win streak going, which was awesome. This was even better with that, you know, is to clinch the pennant. Like it's like this, yeah. I, I would vote for that to win, and that's a great short film right there. It, it, it just, um, I ain't gonna lie. I spent Monday. I took off work. I watched Moneyball, which I love that movie. I was like, I gotta, movie. I gotta rewatch it now. Like, um, it, it just is. It's a special you, moment, man. If you haven't had it, I, I think like certain people, like, you know, we Jack Silverstein talks, like seeing it with the White Sox in 05 and the Cubs in 16. I hope every fan base you get to experience this at least once because it it nothing like it, nothing like it. It's a different feeling, and I'm just glad I, I was a part of it this time. I've been on the other side. We've been on the other side of that, and uh, lots of times. Yeah, so it's it's just good, and it's just like it was a magical moment for a guy having a magical run, but solidifying like his superstardom. Like it's it was just a lot of stuff lined up in that moment. And I'm just glad I was there watching it live. I even said it like he was, I didn't call a home run. Cause I'm not going to be that guy and say I did that. But I was saying, I was like, imagine he gets a home run right here. Like I was just, and he, and he hit that shot and, and Smoltz again, going back to what he was talking about. Smoltz was saying it. You got to stop pitching this guy outside like that. You're pitching him high and outside. He's going to go the other way with it. And he has a beautiful swing and a great, great moment. Great moment. Absolutely, man. This was this was fun. I'm glad we did it. Yeah. Um, Hell yeah. And who knows? Maybe we might come back in a week, week and a half, and we have another one live at live downtown, and we're we're talking about this run, and we really then will have even more late to stand on on yeah ranking where this run is all time. But um, if we don't, is this was still fun too, man? So yeah. I'm glad we did it. Yeah, absolutely, man. Good call. So for the man, the myth, the legend, Mr. Jose Ruiz, I'm Derry Dove. Please like, subscribe, comment uh, to our YouTube page, and also subscribe to the podcast feed, Bigger Than the Game with Derry and Jose. Um, We want to hear more from you all, and we want to keep producing good content for you all. So you guys take care. Peace.